Hey and welcome to the ultimate guide on how to set up my favorite mobile streaming encoder and that is the TBS 2603 SC. Now I've mentioned this one in the last two videos but now we're going to go through every single step that you have to do to set it up properly. Look some people have issues even getting into the settings of this thing and it's and it's tricky it's not trivial so let's go over all you need to know about the TBS encoder. So before we begin, if you want to follow this step by step, if you already got the TBS encoder but didn't manage to successfully set it up, well, these are the things you're going to need. You need the encoder, then you need a power bank with a 12 volt cable in it, and then the last part, of course, is an Ethernet cable, and you can you can use a short one that you're going to use for your uh, actual streams. Now you can either plug this into your home router or you can use the router that you're going to stream with on the go wherever you're streaming with a 4G router. Other than that, you need your home network or the router that you're gonna stream with, a 4G router, with at least one ethernet port, probably two would be better, easier to set up, and the device you're gonna access the web interface because this device uses a web interface. That's the only way you can interact with it. Now, if you look at the back of the device, you'll notice that it has a default IP and then it has a username and password. Now you can try and put in this address 192.168.1217 and see if it works. If it doesn't, well, then we're going to have to do a few changes. But if it does, then you're super happy and you can completely skip this step. So what do we do if we cannot access it? Well, you need to go in and change your router's IP so it matches the same IP range at the end. Now, in most cases, your LAN IP range is defined by the third number, and it's either one or zero in 99% of cases, unless you have some custom network. For me, it was on zero, so I had to change it to one. But how do we even know where our router is? Well, it's pretty simple. You can go on your PC, open up a command window, and just type in IP config. There you can see your local address for the PC and just replace the last number with number one and put it in the browser. This is most likely going to open your router's login page. And here you either have the login info on the back of your router, just go and look at the sticker. If not, you can Google the model and it's probably gonna pop right in the search results what the username and password is, at least the default one. Now, once you're in the router, and of course it depends on the model, but you will find a setting called LAN and inside there should be a router IP. So what you want to do, if it's, for example, a zero on the third slot, you want to change it to one. Don't worry, you can change it back. Nothing's going to happen to your PC if you do that. It's, this is just for the setup. You change it to one, hit apply, and then wait a minute for the router to reset. And after that, Try entering that default IP address from the TBS encoder. Now, if you did everything correctly, it should work. You're in, congratulations. Now the confusion really starts. All right, we made it to the login screen of the router finally. And this is what you greeted with. All you need to do is type in admin, admin. It says on the sticker as well. Username and password. It's probably something similar for your router. Now, the first thing you see is CPU usage, memory usage, core temperature. These are the things you're almost never going to really care about. You're doing only one stream. This would come into play if you were doing, I don't know, four streams at once, for example. I've never seen this go into anything crazy, so don't worry too much about it. Maybe monitor the temperature that doesn't go over 60. If it's 60 plus, then there's something wrong. These things can get pretty hot in backpacks, so make sure if you're using it in a small backpack that has some kind of ventilation going there, otherwise it can get extremely hot. It still works though. On the bottom, you'll be able to see the preview if you have anything connected. So it's about like five FPS, but it's good enough for you to see if it's working or not. Even if you don't have anything receiving this stream. If you would like to do the setup that I've done in this video here, then 
you can follow these exact settings. If not, well, then certain changes have to be made. As we're trying to be as efficient as possible, we're going to be sending an H.265 or HEVC stream, which requires less bitrate. These settings right here that you can see are for a really good looking 1080p 30 or 60 stream. This is going to look really, really good for an IRL stream. Like I said, this thing can broadcast multiple streams at once at different sizes as well. So we'll only be using the main one. And this is 1080p, H265 main profile, that's the only profile. Uh, CBR, CBR is what you use for basically any type of real-time streaming. Um, it's the best. I don't think you should ever use anything else. Now, 5000 bitrate at H.264, this is equivalent of maybe like 9000 at H.264. So this might be even a little bit too high. You might lower this at 1080p 30 without losing any quality. So feel free to use even 3K or 2.5K at H.265. It should still look pretty good. At the GOP 2 seconds, that's fine and frame rate 30. Audio is pretty simple. You can just copy these settings right here. Uh, they are the most used ones. That's it. Now from the settings at the bottom, there's multiple tabs, but I would say you only need to change this one. And it basically just mirrors what you've input on the top. So if you input 3000 here, click save to local, it's going to copy it down there. So that's about it. This is more to change all at once, I guess if you're doing multiple streams. And the only thing you need to do here is click enable. Enable and save down here. I'm not entirely sure what the low latency does in advanced encoding. Might as well use it, right? Now we're in the stream tab. And this one, I really can't get a grasp of. There's, maybe there's bugs in it. Maybe it doesn't work at all. It's hard to say, but this top one, I never got to work. It just doesn't do anything. On the bottom one, you can pick what kind of protocol you want to use. And you can use multiple, as you can see, you can just turn them on. So we're talking about IRL live streaming. We're not talking about any other use case. So here you're only going to be using one protocol and that is SRT. You can use RTMP if you want. I would not recommend it. Use SRT if you have the setup with the stream PC as a relay. All you have to use is the last field This is called push URL and just have it on on and click save. And what do you input in push URL? Well, it's that line that I gave you in the SRT setup video and I'll leave it in the description below again. In short, we're just targeting our stream PC and we're adding two parameters to make it work better. All right, so now for illustration purposes, I've plugged in a GoPro and if you look at the network state graph, you can see that we're streaming at about five, five and a half to 6,000 bit rate. That's how it should look. If you got it right, if you input the right address, if you've set up your OBS correctly, this is what it should look like. And it goes up to, I don't know, about 15 to 20% CPU. So that is it. That's all you have to do. All right, here's how you can make your life easier next time you want to change the settings. You don't have to go through the process again. You can just change the IP address of the encoder. It's all in the options tab right here and you can just adjust it the way you want. So if you have a zero on the third slot, just put it a zero there, 0 0.217, or you can put it on maybe like 0 0.100. So it's easier for you to remember. Make sure that you have it on the same one as it's going to be on your mobile router. This was just a short video on how to get this thing going. And as you get more comfortable, you're gonna be changing more and more settings, but this should get you up to speed. And uh, that is most that you're gonna need from this. But if you want more, you can add overlays in it. You can uh, do some more monitoring. You can do different layouts. Uh, you can send it to different places all at once blah 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 but at the end of the day IRL streaming is pretty simple the simpler you keep it the better it is really by the way you may have noticed a little detail I have a GoPro plugged in and it says 1080p 60 let me tell you right away they're lying 
you cannot get 1080p 60. It's just the input saying that it's 60, but it's actually not. That's why I'm streaming at 30p and it works just fine. Maybe you can guess what the next video is gonna be about. All right, guys, if you have any issues setting this up, you can either leave a comment on YouTube or even better, stop by our Discord server, which is gonna be up here and just ask away. I should be there asking your questions. There's a few more people in the community that have set this exact model up bought it in the last few weeks and are playing around with it so share your experiences and share your story and your streams catch you in the next one